Hello, and welcome back to yet another board game channel, where we will be going through yet another episode in our playthrough of Mansions of Madness, 2nd Edition, the Cycle of Eternity scenario. Uh, before we properly get started, I just now realized a uh, little mistake I've been making with Mandy, um, so we'll cut over to her and I'll go over that. Okay, here we are with Mandy, and uh, I was just looking at her card and realized I'd completely forgotten her uh, special ability. Whoa, can't focus there. Uh, yeah, you see it says, once per round, when you gain a clue, gain one additional clue. So I'm quite sure Mandy should have at least a couple more clue tokens. Uh, she, she received a clue when she chatted with Eugene, and she got one when she was looking at the painting. So she should have at least two more clues because of that ability. So I'm going to uh, just give her a couple more here. So she's now up to five. Now that we fix that, we can get to the game. Alright, here we go, go into the app, hit continue, and resume. And while it loads, let's review. Um, our investigators are not in a particularly good place because, yes, once again they are both restrained and can only do things in the spots they're in, which means not a lot for Mandy. Uh, but first up, Let's deal with Dexter over here fighting the Deep One. Well, I'm going to have him fight the Deep One because there's really nothing else he can do as he can't move. So, let's go into the monster drawer, choose the Deep One. And for his first action attack, he still has the knife, so we will attack with a bladed weapon. You spring forward with a flurry of quick thrusts, probing for an opening. Test agility. Two success needed. And Dexter's agility is three. He has a couple of clues and the lucky cigarette case that he could use to alter the rolls. But it won't do any good because he's got one success and two complete failures that we can't yeah, that we can't fix. Uh, if you fail, which we did, your blade encounters nothing but air. All right, for Dexter's second action, he's going to attack again, still with the knife. We're going to try the exact same move again, apparently. All right, because it worked out so well for you last time. Okay, that time he actually did it. He got two successes. Actually, before we look at it, it's, uh, boom, boom, boom. sometimes, yeah, I'm going to use the lucky cigarette case to turn that one, that last die, into another success because sometimes the amount of successes counts towards better damage. If you pass, your blade pierces the enemy's flesh. Aha! There we go. The monster suffers damage equal to your weapon's damage. One. Plus your test results. So one, two, three, four. Not quite enough to take down the deep one. And that will conclude Dexter's move. Um, Mandy is doing nothing because she can't move and there's nothing else in that space to interact with. Uh, however, we do get rid of both restrained conditions. So the next turn, hopefully they will be able to do something. All right, into the next mythos phase. 
Skittering and creeping, a hundred thousand spiders, that's a lot of spiders, emerge from their hiding places. Dexter Drake scrambles to avoid the worst of their bites. Agility to successes. Again. Okay, come on, Dex. Now, he got one clue which he'd be able to turn into a, a success if we wanted to, but it still wouldn't be enough. If he fails, he receives many bites, and the venom makes the world warp around him, suffers one face-down damage, and two horror, and becomes stunned. That's pretty terrible. All right, that was one face-down damage. Uh, Dexter's up to five damage. He's got one more to go until he becomes properly wounded. Two horror, which will be face up. Oh, here's our first one. Paranoia. You find yourself imagining all the ways your friends could hurt you. Keep face up. Whenever you end your turn within range of another investigator, flip one horror face up. And his second horror... Oh, it's just a minor shock. Ah! Your heart races and your breath catches in your throat. No additional effect. Flip the card face down. So he's halfway to insane as well. Uh, and he is also stunned. Which means he cannot perform more than a single action during his turn. This is all pretty terrible. I don't know if we're going to have any luck here. The Deep One moves two spaces toward the nearest investigator. He's in a space with Dexter. Then it attacks the investigator in its space who has suffered the most horror. Monster attacks. The Deep One crouches low and makes a horrific croaking sound before launching itself towards you. Testing agility again, but this time at least we only need one success. Uh, which we're going to have to spend one of Dexter's two clues for, as he can't roll at all tonight. So, we turned it into a success. If you pass, you somehow avoid the terrifying assault. Good. Now, the witch, yes, moves up to two spaces to be within range of as many investigators as possible. Well, if she moved out here, uh, Mandy would not be within range because of the door. So, I think it's more likely that rather than move all the way out there to be within range of Dexter over there, she's just going to move the one space. Oh, actually, she doesn't need to move at all. She's already within range of as, as many investigators as she can be. So, yeah, I think she's just going to stand there. Uh, then it attacks the investigator within range who suffered the most damage. The witch cackles and vanishes in a burst of green flame as a dense thicket of black brambles grows around you. Observation, two successes needed. Her observation is a five. <clears throat> and she's got a whole lot of clues. Come on, Mandy. Two successes. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. If you pass, you quickly find a path through the thorns, which tear at your skin and clothing like real things, but vanish like a dream once you are free. Flip two damage face up. Yeah. She does have three face down damage, so let's take it all and give it a shuffle. First of all, minor injury, only a flesh wound. Flip this card face down. Now the other two, yay, another minor injury, so we can just flip that one back, so that was fine. Now we have to do the horror checks, 
does not bode well, uh, especially for Dexter. All right, solving a horror check for Dexter in the same space. Has the deep one. Its movements and mannerisms are subtly, terribly human. Suffer two horror. We can negate with will plus one. So we will be rolling four dice. We're praying for two successes here. All right, let's have one, two, three, four. And yeah. All right, I'll use his last clue to convert that to a success. So he only takes one horror, which will put him up to five out of eight on his way to uh, just going insane. And this is going to be face up. Panic, scrambling forward, you fall over and hurt yourself. The pain brings you back into focus. Solve immediately. Suffer one additional face down damage. Well, that's really, really bad. Um, then flip this card face down. Because one, two, three, four, five, yes. That will be six. So it's face down. What happens at this point? Because Dexter has got, gotten all of his damage, we actually discard all of his damage cards. Just get rid of them all, including that horrible broken leg. And instead, he becomes wounded. You cannot perform the move action more than once each round, so we're not getting around in a hurry. <clears throat> Now, if Dexter gets another six damage, um, he, he dies, and we lose, unless we can miraculously finish the, uh, the mystery on that last round, which does not seem likely. All right. Now the witch is going to force a horror check on Mandy. In a voice like honeyed wine, oh, we've had this, the witch wonders out loud how it is possible to know a thing truly exists. So what to be doing? Building for her lore, and we need two successes from Mandy. Nope. Uh, if you fail, you become transfixed by the problem, rooted to the spot in fear that the ground around you is not real. Become restrained. So we're going to have another useless turn after this. Nobody's going to be able to do anything. All right. Let's uh, wrap that up and go back into the investigator phase. All right, let's see if Dexter cannot screw up his one more than a single action during a turn. Yes, he can only uh, he can only do one thing because he's stunned. So he's going to try to take out the deep one with his knife. Bladed weapon. You try to sweep your enemy's arms aside while stabbing with your other hand. Test strength, and we need two successes. And we have no clues. Oh wait, but we do refresh our lucky cigarette case. So we desperately need to, to pass this. And thank God he actually did. If you pass, the maneuver leaves your foe wide open to your cruel blade. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus your test results. Well, it's only got a single point left. So we do that last bit of damage. Confirm. And, uh, Dexter's turn is finished. And now Mandy's turn. 
Oh wait, we're getting rid of Dexter's Stunned. Mandy's turn is now finished, because she can literally do nothing. Uh, and she'll lose Restrained, probably until next turn. <laughs> the way this is going. Alright, so, straight back into the Mythos phase. Unbidden, the terrible things you have seen rise up from your memory, where they were safely locked away. Each investigator flips to horror face up. So, more misery and suffering. All right. Da, 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 da. We'll do Dexter. One. Panic. Scrambling backwards, you fall over and hurt yourself. The pain brings you back into focus. Suffer face down damage. I think we're going to lose. Um, <laughs> so another one. Minor shock. No additional effect. Turn it face down. Uh, <clears throat> Maddie only has a single horror to flip face up, and hers is just a minor shock. Okay, good. The witch moves up to two spaces, again, to be within range of as many investigators as possible. And she's attacking Mandy because she's the only one. With a lurid grin, the witch gestures, and brilliant purple lightning plays across the space between you. Suffer three face-down damage. Uh, her trying to negate it with her agility minus one which means she's rolling two dice to try to prevent three damage. <laughs> well, at least she blocked two of them, so she will take one more face down damage. She is almost wounded. She's at, uh, she's got two health left. And we continue. Then, we need to do the horror check. For the witch, the witch gestures and blood bubbles up from the ground at your feet. Yuck. Uh, we're tr doing a will check and we need two successes. Her will is three. She does have the Holy Cross, so she will be rolling four dice. Uh, and we are going to use two clues so we don't fail this completely. Okay, one clue. And two clues. There we go. If you pass, you ignore the gruesome pools. I'm not sure how. Blech. And we will end the mythos phase. All right. Hey, Mandy's not restrained. She can actually do something. Uh going to have going to make Mandy go first because we want Dexter to not end within range of Mandy otherwise he'll have to flip a horror so Mandy first is going to move for her first action is going to move uh, Two spaces. Uh, let's see. I don't want to actually send her all the way in there because she won't have any actions left to explore. But do I want her to do something in this space or in this space? Anyway, let's go one, two, and open up another door. See if we can find anything else useful here. So we're going to do this. You suspect the unmarked door leads to a bedroom. All right. The door opens into a bedroom that seems modest compared to the decor of the rest of the mansion. Uh, discard this token and place bedroom 2 tile as indicated. All right, back in a moment. All right. There we go. We've got the 
bedroom placed there near the door a small writing desk holds an immense book uh, right there there's the desk in the far corner a large chest chest sits next to the master bed that sounds promising right there you may move one space into the explored area. Well, let's just do that. I'll have a look around in there. All right. So, on to Dexter, who is going to move. Can't perform any move action more than, well, he's only going to move once. So we're going to put him here. I think, uh, as much as I don't especially want to, I think we do need to examine that secret passage that uh, the cultist and the deep one came out of. So, let's just choose that token. Peering behind the bookshelf, the robed figure was moving. You see runic circles inscribed on the wall. You push aside the, the shelf to reveal the ritual circles the butler spoke of. You attempt to trace them as he told you. Tap to attempt the puzzle using lore. And his lore, Dexter's lore is five. So we've got a good shot at figuring this out. Okay, this is a, I can't remember what they call it. It's a, it's a picture puzzle. I've got to rearrange the tiles to form a coherent image. And uh, swapping two, I'm not sure if they have to be adjacent, but we'll find out when we start tapping on the screen. Uh, yeah, swapping two of them counts as one move. So, I'm pretty sure that will go there. So that's what, whoop. oh, I see. I drag it. Oh, okay, hold on. Let's think about this. Where do I need things to be? Let me stop and have a look at this and see if I can uh, decide what my five moves are going to be. Okay. I might have this, but I might not. <laughs> anyway, there's move one. Two, three, four, five. Ha <laughs> I got it. Dexter had just the, the right amount of lore to get through that. Thank you, Dexter. You trace a continuous line through the winding markings as the butler instructed you. The runes illuminate with a strange green light and a wall panel pops open, revealing a secret door to a hidden study behind the wall. Gain one clue and place a door token, as indicated. There is another clue for Dexter, actually his only clue right now. We will remove that, and I will grab a door, which now appears here. Okay, some mystery progress. Oh, okay, it opens right up. The secret panel in the wall slides open noiselessly, and you peer into a hidden office. Place the study tile and a wall as indicated. All right, back in a moment. All right, there we have it with a, uh, a wall covering up that door because it does not connect to the bedroom. What else comes up? A bookshelf filled with frightening objects is mounted on the opposite wall. Right there. An oak desk sits on the other side of the room. Yes, it does. Right there. You may move one space into the explored area. he does. Now that that's actually part of his explore action 
So the um, the wounded, which says he can't perform can't perform the move action more than once each round. This was not actually his move action, so he still gets to move that space. Okay, a little more exploring done. So um, once more, on to a mythos phase. Through the dark, you see a pair of red eyes slowly moving towards you. Each investigator in a space containing darkness suffers to horror. None of us is in darkness. Thank goodness. Oh, good. You start to hear the sound of voices chanting in unison from another part of the estate. The ritual is nearly complete. Someone stop them. We will be spawning another witch. Aha. Right. It turns out uh, I don't have another witch figure available at the moment because um, it's a first edition monster. And um, on my other copy of the witch, I'm unable to get the old first edition tile out of the figure to replace it with the new second edition tile. So we will just use this tile to indicate the witch. I mean, it's got a picture and everything, so it's as good as. Also, we will note that here they got a little rune on it, a red one. That is basically there. We'll add it to our witch just to tell the difference between the two different witches in the app. So, which appears there. Oop. Yes, as the cultist bursts into the lobby, Eugene yells with fright and scrambles through the east door of the lobby. Remove Eugene from the board. So he's fled into this room that we have not explored, so we can't actually see what he's up to. Now, this is the original witch, the one without the, the rune. Uh, moves up to two spaces to be within his range of as many investigators as possible. So, it's going to move one and two. However, we're not within range. So, it doesn't attack. We tell it, cannot move to be within range. It then moves another two spaces towards the nearest investigator. Which, in this case, it's now ignoring range, so it can go... Well... It's still ignoring range for its movement, which means it can go through the door. And it's now in the same space as Mandy. However, it doesn't get a chance to attack because it's used the rest of its turn just getting to Mandy. Uh, the other witch, you can see the little red icon there, moves up to two spaces to be within range of as many investigators as possible. Once again, it's doing the same. One, two. Oh, this is going to be a bad turn for Mandy again. <laughs> Cannot move to be within range. The witch moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator. Okay, hold on. The way that was phrased, it said it cannot move to be within range, so it just moves two spaces. It doesn't move an extra two spaces. It just moves two spaces instead, if I'm interpreting the language correctly. I will look into that. I'm just going to assume, I'm going to make this the last turn for this video anyway, so I can see if I can look into it. So we will leave it, oh, however it means, it may affect whether or not Mandy gets horror checks. However, I am now interpreting it to mean they just moved the two spaces. Again, if, if necessary, I can do some, some horror checks for, uh, I can do some extra horror checks for Mandy later on. So, uh, yes, as they are there, they're not actually within range, so we are going to end the Mythos phase. And I think we're going to call that an episode. So, once again, a very mixed bag. 
we at least got a little bit of exploration done. Uh, I, think we're, I think we're getting closer, but we've got to contend with two witches now who are barreling towards Mandy. Well, we'll see what happens next time. So thanks everybody for watching. Uh, thanks for subscriptions and likes and comments and pointing out any errors I might make. And uh, we will see you next time. So long.